Hello everyone, Dead Spikes here. Today I am making my first build video for Minecraft Dungeons. I know it's pretty crazy, it's pretty early, but I do feel fairly optimal on this build setup. I please ask if you have not yet and you enjoyed my videos, please subscribe to the channel for some more content. If you have never watched one of my build videos before, things I like to do is I will showcase um, some boss killing and whatever the build does to to persuade you to use it and then i will go over how the build works let's get into it the first thing we're going to showcase is how this build does on mobbing let's see how it does on the mushroom island we are on apocalypse 6. i think it's pretty quick on killing these mushrooms and these mushrooms can be tanky especially uh before you have your first build set up and they are dying fairly quickly i would say just taking them out. Here we go. He got some more up here. Perfect. That has very good sustainability too. So as you can see, I take practically no damage. I know these guys aren't the hardest hitting things in the game. But we'll have to show down a few other ads. But yeah, look at how fast it's clearing out these trains. It, it is great. I'm really loving this build so far. All right, let's go try it out on some different ads. All right, we are at the second to last place on the game, and we're doing this little defending sequence. I think this is a decent place to show off a build. This place is pretty tough. Very tanky enemies here. And as you can see, we could just mow right through them without any damage taken at all we are on apocalypse 6 again i wish there was some way to show it i don't think there is without starting it all right see we were hurt there a little bit from those archers but we just healed right up all right come on super fast they're almost like not spawning fast enough for me to kill them Absolute awesome. Come on. Don't you run from me? Get back, you illager. Is that it? Right, something left? Oh, God. Okay. Oh, they're still spawning. Holy crap, they spawn a lot here. Come on. Still going. Oh, we got big boys here now. No problem. No problem. All right. There we go. Let's show some bossing. Now, I know this isn't the hardest boss here, but this boss is pretty fun to showcase a build on. I must say myself. I mean, look at this. Look at that. That's Apocalypse 6, man. That's awesome. All right, we are at the Mushroom final boss here. Let's see what this build can do to him. What's his name? Mushroom Monstrosity. Almost got him in one whole burst. That was pretty cool. Dang, that's awesome. That's an Apocalypse 6. All right, now we're up to the final boss. We'll show stage one and stage two separately. Here's stage one. Super annoying stage. All right. I can get him to stand still. It does a lot of damage to him. There he goes. All right, let's showcase stage two now. All right, now we're coming up on stage two of the end boss, Heart of Ender. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That was awesome. <laughs> That's the very highest difficulty too. Now let's go over the build. 
All right, so now you saw this baby in action. I showed you some ad killing and I showed you a little bit of boss killing. So let's go over what is making this build so strong. All of the footage you saw was on the highest difficulty. I must tell you, um, there's no way to show you sadly. I wish there was, maybe there will be someday, but yeah. All right, so let's go over it. So the weapons you're seeing me use here are the moon daggers. The moon daggers are actually extremely easy to farm and they are very, very good. If you know how to use them correctly. First off, I'll show you where to farm these things because it's very important. You can get them from the soggy cave. Daggers are right there. All right, perfect. So that's where you get the moon daggers. Next, we have the renegade armor. Now this you can farm from two places. You have the fiery forge. It's the mercenary armor. And then you also have cacti canyon. Cacti canyon is what I suggest. These two things are what make the build mostly. Everything else. You kind of just get the bow is optional i haven't figured out the best bow to complement this build yet so i'm just using my damaging bow which is my purple storm shoots extremely fast and has high power with ricochet and chain reaction which makes it shoot a lot more arrows around that's not very important it's the moon dagger and renegade that are very important and your artifacts that you are using so with the moon dagger this is the one that i'm using but this is not the best variant you can get i'm using critical hit radiance exploding now the very best moon dagger you could get for this build would be critical hit radiance swirl um swirl is where every few hits you send out a whirlwind around you that deals damage that would be the absolute best moon dagger you could get maybe a 107 crit radiance swirling you had that boom you have the perfect dagger for this build now if you don't have that um the third ability you're just gonna have to cope with what you got i'm using exploding um exploding is not terrible it's actually pretty good but swirling would just be better because it's based off the number of hits and we're getting off a lot of hits that's why radiance is keeping us alive you don't know what radiance does is it gives you a 20 percent chance to spawn a circle area that heals all allies so every five hits basically we're healing ourselves and everybody around us on our team and since these things are hitting so fast that thing is procking so much to make it so we cannot die and then critical hit on top of it is giving us a 20 percent chance to crit so Critting does like three times damage, I think, which is where all this damage is coming from. So we're constantly healing ourselves and constantly critting. Um, and we could, would constantly be AoEing um, if we had swirling, but sadly we do not. Exploding, we're just, when we kill something, it'll blow up and damage everything else. Now the reason we chose Renegade Armor um, is because it has a 25% melee attack speed boost, which will make your Radiance go off, it'll make your crits happen more often, and it will also make that swirling go off if you have it. Now, this is a god roll renegade armor, in my opinion. This is exactly what I wanted, and this is what I got. So I got lucky. I got cooldown, which will make it so my artifacts come back 27% faster. That is great. I have protection, so I take 15% more damage reduction on top of the 35%. And then I have gravity pulse, so everything comes closer to me, so I can kill them a lot faster. I suggest these three rolls absolutely. The biggest, most important roll here is cooldown by far. Cooldown is what you absolutely need on the Renegade armor when you're running it. The other two are optional, but this is what I highly suggest right here is this setup. Um, this plus 20% weapon damage boost aura, I did some testing, and this actually only boosts your allies. It doesn't boost you. But if you're running with some friends with Renegade armor, it will boost you. So I highly suggest all four of you to run Renegade armor. That might be how I play this game from now on. Pretty cool. I'm helping my friends farm it right now. And um, basically, if everybody had it, you'd each have a 60% damage boost. That's pretty good. On top of that, attack speed for yourself and damage reduction. All right, so let's go over the artifacts. Um, I switched between... Like probably six artifacts actually i switch them quite often but when i start the arena um i look like this i either look like this or i look like this with my um artifacts now it's strange i know in probably none of the footage you saw me run soul healer that's because i don't actually use it i put it on specifically for the soul gathering now you could put any artifact on that has soul gathering just do not use it now what is the reason behind this well, the Moon Daggers have a, um, a special ability right here called Soul's Crit Boost. Now, you might not know what that is because you can't click on it and read it. But basically what this does is it gives you a chance to crit um, if you have, like, basically max souls. If you have max souls, you have a chance to deal three times more damage. Um, but you actually can't earn souls unless you have something that has this ability plus one soul gathering. So I put this soul healer on, I get my souls to max... 
and then I swap it off. And when I swap it off, I like to look like this, double mushroom gong. Because if you have double mushroom with the cooldown, you never run out of mushroom. There is just enough time for you to proc mushroom back and forth. Watch. Okay. Um, I'll try it right in front of you right now. So I pop a mushroom. You can see I still have 12 seconds left. Now this gets close down there. I'll have just enough time to pop another mushroom to keep it so it's 100% active. And this is going to increase your attack speed and your attack damage to complement the build even more. See? And then when the, when the first one's done, the second one's halfway and I already ran out. And then you can just keep swapping them back and forth like that to give infinite mushroom to yourself. It wouldn't be possible without cooldown. My friend who has this without cooldown, he runs triple mushroom. All right, um, the gong. The reason we run the gong is because it gives you a three times damage boost. Let's just show that off real quick. We got the training dummy over here. So we hit him for 863. Okay. Now when I pop the gong, 2500. That's triple damage just right there. That's awesome. And as you saw when I was bossing, I run double gong. Because the mushroom lasts long enough for me to kill the boss, but the gong does not because it only lasts 7 seconds. So I pop one gong off the start. About halfway, I pop the second gong, and it gives me just enough time to clean up that boss. And that'll do it for this build. I like to call him Bullet Blade Brian because he's extremely fast at swinging these moon daggers. Hope you guys can get this build together. I think it is fairly easy to farm. And it's a pretty awesome build. I'm sure endgame, this might just be my boss killing build rather than my normal build. But I'm liking it for everything right now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And please do make sure you subscribe to the channel for some more Minecraft dungeon videos. I'm going to be on this game for a while. And I'll be making a lot of tutorials and builds for you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope I can see you guys in the stream in the pinned comment down below. Catch you in the next one. Zbikes out.